recoil operated M11 and a gas operated AR15. Physics wise, they have a lot more in common than you might think. So let's go discuss the physics of these two and the importance of quality tech manuals and documentation. Down the rabbit hole, boys and girls. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In order to have something go that way, I have to push off on something that way. The net forces are zero. So let's look at the two ways that, have, that firearms are done where the propellant inside the cartridge provides the energy to do the work. We can either, here we have a barrel, and here we have a barrel, right? We can duct gas off of this and we can push backwards on a piston that does our work for us. We're gonna call this the bolt. Or we can have, let's see, there's a cylinder here. So that's our cylinder, right? The other way to look at this there's a shot charge or a projectile or whatever. That's going that way and it's pushing backwards on the gun. We call that recoil. That's in the gas system right here. We have our gunpowder burning and out it goes. And then as it goes by, the gas pushes on this and moves it backwards. Or we can do what John Browning said, lock the bolt and the barrel together as our projectile egresses out the front, what we call recoil moves the whole thing. So in this particular case, that's the cylinder. And in this particular case, the barrel is actually the cylinder. So it's two different ways of doing it. This involves a tremendous amount of reciprocating mass. reciprocating mass, the poster child for which is the show show. <laughs> oh man, that, that kicks. That's the poster child for reciprocating mass. Show show A5, M11. And in this particular case, we've got this M11 that's in here. And this does the whole thing where the entire barrel and the cylinder comes backwards. Let me see if I can get this pushed in this angle right here. The whole barrel and the cylinder comes back. The whole thing moves. As opposed to, say, gas operation. And we're going to look at a little bit of the physics of the gas operation here. And let me see if I can show you guys something. Let's get up inside of this magwell here and take a look see if we can actually see that little shiny piece up in there is actually a gas tube. Let's tear the AR-15 bolt apart and take a look at that. I've come up with an idea to keep this uptight camera from getting in the way. We bought a new arm and hung it from my light post, so we're going to try this out so now I can actually walk right up to the bench and describe things. So I've got a couple of gas systems here. And I'm using that Snyder ROM, and I know that doesn't fit in an AK, but I'm using it just because projectile leaves the barrel, pressurizes the gas system, pushes back on the piston, and does its work. Okay? Same thing. Same thing in the AR. The projectile is sitting here. The projectile leaves. We pressurize the front end over here. We blow down through the tube, and in this little gizmo here called the gas key, that's going to come to the rear and come back again. In the recoil operated setup, the entire gun is that projectile sits in there. And by the way, this thing's neutered, so nobody freak out. It's just 
it's a parts gun here in the shop. The entire barrel, I took the spring off so that it's easier to move it. The entire barrel and the bolt go back as one piece. Now there's a spring and a set of friction rings here, and I'll get back into that later. But as you can see, as the projectile leaves, the opposite reaction is to shove this whole mess that way. And, and that's a different kettle of fish for another day. But I built something, and I want to go talk about what happens when you add mass, add springs, whatever. So the physics part of that comes next. There's one basic equation that's going to work for all of this. And we're going to make a lot of generalizations and a lot of assumptions here. We're going to be working with the equation that says force is equal to mass times acceleration. We're going to be working with that. Well, just humor me here. So there's probably 10 or 12 different states that matter can be in, but we know that there's position, there's the rate of change of position, there's the rate at which our rate of position change changes, and then there are a lot of other things here that come after that, all right? So follow me here. Where you're at is to the zero power. I'm here, it's one, I'm standing here. Your velocity is the time rate of, that you're changing your position at. That's to the first power. The rate at which your velocity changes is acceleration. The rate at which your acceleration changes is jerk, snap, crackle, pop. Don't worry about those. Jerk is called jounce in the automotive world. We're not really worried about that. We're just down to acceleration. The point being is, is that acceleration is a squared factor. So anything that messes with the A in this is gonna have a order of magnitude greater weight. Just remember that. Okay. In the firearms realm here, and this is what we're talking about, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, okay? So the force that's driving all this is the cartridge. And the force that's resisting all of this is the spring. All right? Now the spring works out and back and the cartridge only works one way. It doesn't matter. These two forces have to balance each other. More cartridge requires more spring. And as we're gonna see later, the speed with which this works, how fast the gun cycles has to do with its mass. Trust me, we're gonna demonstrate that. But in our particular case, there's a balance that has to happen here. And the enemy in this entire thing is time. When you uh, ignite the gunpowder in a cartridge, the cartridge swells like a balloon, it obtruates. And it takes a finite amount of time for that pressure to drop to where it's safe to extract the cartridge. So on like a 22, it doesn't take very long at all. And up to about a 380 ACP, you can just have a spring pushing up against something. In our case, we need to buy a little more time, so we allow for a little bit of motion, let everything unlock, that goes to the rear and comes back. We'll get into that, but most of the larger calibers, the, the 12 gauges, the 30 odd sixes, the 45 ACPs all work locked more on that maybe in a little bit here. But in our particular case, there's two forces we're dealing with, okay? We're dealing with either the force of the, uh, let's call it um, propellant, and then we're also talking about the force of the spring. Now they work opposite to each other. The spring you compress, and then it gives its energy back. It's always accelerating that way and it's decelerating negatively two negatives make a positive so the spring is working in opposition to your cartridge right so we're going to look at a couple of cases here our cartridge doesn't change if our cartridge doesn't change and that double-ended pencil represents something that has not moved at all and we turn the mass we make something heavier we give it more mass in order to balance this equation, the acceleration component must go down. I hope that makes sense. Conversely, if the mass goes down, our acceleration component must go up. It just does. These two times each other are going to equal something that's constant. So one other thing here, acceleration is actually displacement 
per unit time. So displacement per unit time, here it is right there. Remember I said we were trying to buy ourselves some time? That's the big deal right there. Our displacement, when we're talking in the, I'm gonna go ahead and say this, we're talking about propellant right now. We're not talking about the spring. Our displacement is the same out as it is back. So at the end of the day, this plus is gonna equal that minus and therefore our displacement is always going to be a constant. So time is what we're messing with here. So if our mass goes up, this acceleration number must go down and in order for it to go down, the amount of time must go up because it's in the denominator. If the mass goes down, our amount of time must go down because our displacement within the system has remained the same. This becomes backwards if you're looking at it from the spring case. I've made a gas key here. So I've got this roller gizmo right here. Now, yes, we're using an extension spring instead of a compression spring, but let's look at what we got. If you push this thing all the way out and come back in again, we're going to be able to vary its mass. We're going to be able to vary the amount of spring tension we put on it, and we'll be able to vary the air pressure, but I, I believe that the amount of gas we throw at this thing isn't going to have a whole lot to do with it. Pretty simple. We have a straight amount of air pressure here, and it blows this off, and then this spring turns it around and brings it back. It's kind of like uh, launching a rocket straight up. It comes straight back down again. The, uh, as soon as we're done pushing on it, it begins to decelerate under the force of the band. And then as the band brings it back, it will begin to accelerate again until it comes back. Now, I'm well aware of the fact that force times equals mass times acceleration. The acceleration has to be constant. But pull back and take one look at this. During the duration of the trip, what the rubber band does is not going to change. So I think we're going to be okay here just to demonstrate when you add weight and when you don't. So when we're completely at the lightest we can be at and we've got two rubber bands on it, Now let's add some mass. In my particular case, it's these 530 grain monsters that I run out of my 4570. And I've drilled some holes in the top of this. The Army went to a heavier buffer in an attempt to not beat their M16s up. And I think this is what they did. They added, now I'm adding a lot of weight to this. And the reason why I'm adding a lot of mass is because I want to really show the difference between something that's light and something that's heavy. The previous test was run at 80 pounds per square inch and the air compressor just shut off. So this is at 150 pounds per square inch. Let's pull all this mass out and see what 150 PSI looks like without the mass, and I predict we're probably going to get all the way out to the end. Let's look at all this stuff in slow motion, shall we? You can see with the same amount of air pressure, it goes the same distance. It just takes longer to do it. More gas does cause it to go a little bit further, but not that much. We pretty much did a 40% increase in pressure, and it had very little effect. Same thing with the heavy one. A major increase in gas pressure had not a whole lot of effect on how far it traveled. We've dramatically increased rubber band weight. We've added a lot more spring, and I've done this to really demonstrate the difference between a lighter and a heavier spring. This is at high pressure.
I killed the air compressor and ran the pressure down, so let's take a look. Here we have low pressure without the mass. The principle of long recoil and gas operations been around for a while. So what I've come out here to figure out is whether or not it works outside also. How about that? It works outside too. Long recoil was used first. Gas operation was just coming in. Gas operation required a smokeless propellant just because of all the, the, the dirt involved. Black powder silts everything up. The problem with long recoil in the end run is that long recoil has a human being involved. Well, I hope that explained a couple of things because I'm going to tell you what is exhausting to film, but as always, a pleasure being with you guys. And yeah, there was that. And I'm going to tell you what, that thing smacked the Terwillikers out of me. But let's summarize here. You can go fast with a light bolt and a light spring, MP5, Villa Perosa. You can go slow with a heavy bolt, lots of mass, mammoth cartridge. Um, M2 Browning, yeet cannon, all right? So the whole trick there is, is that all of that has, still has to occur. It doesn't matter what you're using. The envelope has to be balanced from cartridge pressure to what you're restoring that energy with, the spring. It all has to operate inside of that envelope within a, a range of masses that sets your speed. But there are limits to all of this and it all has to work together. So just remember, if you're going to change one of those parameters, you had better have done a little bit of homework because I'm gonna tell you what, you can't afford to break as many guns as Hiram Maxim broke, and that's for sure. And as always, it's been a pleasure to attempt to explain this to y'all. See you on the flip side.